I mean, every game's significant so early in the season. Uh, the more you win early in the year, you know, the less you have to fight your way through the season. Uh, we, we were really well planned for this game. Uh, not to say we weren't for the first couple of weeks, but I thought we played the conditions really well. I mean, it was swirling and wasn't easy. And then everyone contributed in the areas that we look at. So, and personally and from a club point of view, it was important that we won on today and recognise Pav and breaking the record at this football club. It's only a young football club. Mark, how much did Aaron Sandlin set up the game for you and then how difficult was it to cover it? He sets up a lot of our play around stoppages and then what he does around the ground. A full credit to Kepler and, and Michael Johnson when they had to fill the void there and compete against uh, the Adelaide Ruckman and stoppage players. So things happen in games and if you've got a side that can replace players when they get injured or they're not necessarily playing well, then it's a good sign. What's the best series uh, Our understanding is that you'll go and see a... Um, an eye specialist tonight, he'll probably stay here tonight and hopefully fly home in the morning, so I don't know the full extent, but it was a poke in the eye. Did his eye close up? He can't see, mate. He's, so there's a couple of nicknames coming already. <laughs> and there's nothing additionally? <coughs> no, no, mate, just couldn't see. No, yeah. What did he know? It was a Greek. Um, was it a Cyclops? <laughs> no. Nah. Shouldn't make light of it. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, look, um, I think the way we pressured and the way... We're only a sort of young team that's maturing, but I thought physically we were good today. Yeah. Why do you say that it's important for the club? Well, I think milestones and um, making sure that you stamp um, your authority so early in the season. Um, we probably haven't been on top of our game in the first two weeks, even though we've got close and we've won one on the road already prior to today. Um, and we've still got you know, a number of players out at the moment, so it's a real challenge for the group to get through and, you know, the next two weeks and then we've got to buy. So, um, you know, we can't lose face that we need to win at home in the next couple of weeks. Well, I mean, I think in this... Uh, this game, it's getting harder and harder to amass games. And, um, I mean, Paz basically got there because he's such a great player. And then on top of that, he's had durability and the ability to be able to expose the game for what it presents. And recognising, I reckon we're recognising the best player that the club's ever had. Do you get a more acute appreciation for a game because of the travel factor that you were aware of? Yeah, all, all of that, and it's important. Pav's family's here today, and his wife. And you know, there was times where probably Adelaide wanted him to come back home, but he hasn't. And you know, he's committed to Fremantle for life, and that's important. A lot of people would say Pav just had to carry the team to the extent. He has. How important yeah. was that to win for him? His big day today. That's that was the importance that was spoken about prior to the game. Yeah, the players knew what was on the line, and you know, Aaron, along with Pav, have. Shared a load in many games that we've had to fight out, and it was about time the whole team did it. Uh, well, we subbed him, didn't we? So um, that was the decision we had to make. And we had Sun Sun ready to go, and uh, it took 10 or 12 minutes before we actually knew the full extent of whether he could come on or not. So we had to make a decision. What's been said about how crucial he is to you? What did you learn about having to cope with that for a half? Well, um, I mean, you always, I'm not sure what we learned, but all, all I know is that when the game presented itself where it was on the line in the last half, I, I was, you know, our young team was significant in those moments where, when, when it had to be. You know, everyone's touting at Adelaide's a top six side. Um, they were coming off a break. So, and this is our second week that we travelled out of three. So, um, and they did run over Hawthorne two weeks ago. So, means a lot. Matthew, what did this game mean for you? I said a way that um, it didn't mean a lot, and I absolutely meant that because <clears throat> um, the win, more than anything, was going to be crucial for winning sake um, to get you know back above a ledger. You know, being two and one this the Saturday afternoon as compared to the opposite. So. Um, and I didn't want to be disrespectful or dismissive of the of the record because um, I understand that it is significant given the, the youth 
or the, um, how young our club is. Um, but I didn't want it to be a distraction. Um, I wanted it to be business as usual and, uh, you know, as I said, to be two on one rather than one or two was really important this afternoon. As you said, then say something about your teammates that they saw more in it that you made out of it? Um, yeah, uh, probably. Um, you know, I, it was ironic and special and all those things so that it landed in Adelaide and I think they probably understood that and then I... I don't often ask my teammates much um, outside of expecting a certain stand and level each week, but I did ask um, for one thing today, and that was to live in the moment, live in the moment, and play for each other. And I think what we saw in the first half was exactly that. And given that we had you know, Aaron go down, um, we were able to fight it out, and we did play for each other, which um, gets bandied around in as a cliche, but uh, I think there's some genuine merit to it at times throughout the year. Well, yeah, <coughs> I could see, um, you know, my family and, and friends up in the stand. So I think, you know, I don't want to underestimate how challenging it has been at times um, during my tenure tenure at, uh, at Fremantle. You know, 11 or 12 years of, of hard work, and um, we haven't had the sustained success that I would have liked um, as a team. So. To look up and see them and um, be cheered off, I think it meant it meant a lot uh, in the end. Not that leading into the game it actually felt that way, but the emotion um, sometimes in this game is hard to hold back. Did you talk to Shane Smith? I spoke to him last week. Yeah, I, I wanted to speak to him. You know, obviously leading into to equaling the record, and I think I mentioned last week how totally um, well typically understated Shane was in that. It was probably lower on his agenda than it was on mine. Um, so it was nice to speak to him about uh, our time together and, and what it meant to him. And he was obviously really proud and, and happy that uh, I was able to to take it over from him, so to speak. Matthew, how, how difficult was it out there in all the conditions? Because yeah. a lot of players on both sides were going to make them simple, ball handling and what have you. Was it tough out there? Not only in the ball handling area, certainly. Um, you know, you would have sent a lot of the ball carrying over the back or dropping short and um, having the players adjust to that was, was challenging at times. But we spoke about that during the week and it's credit to the coaching staff how well they planned into this game and, and to see the game plan executed early on in the game gave us great confidence. So regardless of the conditions, um, we were confident that we could go out there and execute the game plan, but it was challenging, yes. Look, all, all I can comment on is the fact that we've got a really driven and motivated young group of players, and we're starting to see the fruits of, you know, the labour that we sort of put together quite a few years ago. There was some pain there for for some time, given that when Mark I guess arrived, he. Um, uh, started again, so to speak, drafted a lot of young players. Um, we've probably had 30-odd young players come into our group over the last two or three seasons. Now, that's a hell of a lot in you know, for football terms. So um, I don't know what that means in terms of at the end of the year, the latter position, um, but I'm confident that we'll be highly competitive each week. What is it that's sort of clicked for Fremantle over the past couple of years that you are more consistent? Is it you've read that mistake together? I don't think anything ever just clicks, to be honest. Um, there's a fair bit of hard work behind the scenes, um, training every day, uh, planning uh, at various levels. So it never really just clicks. Um, I think it's a hell of a lot of hard work from a huge amount of people. Mark, you, you mentioned a couple of times about your planning, and obviously you played very well. What was the key thing that you felt that you had to plan against the pros today? Well, we, they're obviously a very good defensive side. So we managed to make sure that we didn't give them the opportunity to zone a hell of a lot throughout the course of the game, and we wanted to make their defence accountable. So that was the main idea behind what we did today. So if I can give you an insight without giving away too much, um, that would be it, yeah. Um, what's the same way you come out and you took two and one, and made three and got some of what we would consider some of your best players out? Yeah. Well, so I tell you what you do realise is not to get carried away with uh, a win because it comes back to you quite quickly in this competition. Mm.